Hello and welcome uh, to this lecture on supplier categorization and segmentation. Uh, this is a, a discussion that we mentioned in our introduction, but now we are getting into the details of understanding uh, what really happens uh, in categorization and segmentation. And we are saying is uh, just a process where we divide our suppliers uh, based on groups eh, and their importance to, to the business. So, uh, and also when we are doing that division, we are also looking at uh, their risk profile. And the purpose of doing this is, of course, to be able to allocate their resources more efficiently and to focus on uh, managing uh, these suppliers at the most critical, that are very critical to the business. Eh? So the reason for segmentation is uh, to have uh, different categories where we are putting in suppliers and uh, the reasons why we are also doing that is uh, we will be able to uh, manage the risks that are associated with each supplier we will also be able to have uh, supplier diversity uh, so we will quite have quite a number maybe in each segment or in each category uh, we will also ensure effective uh, performance evaluation of of all the suppliers. Now, when we do categorization, we had mentioned this in our previous lecture, uh, but we did not get into the details. Uh, we could uh, categorize them into uh, strategic suppliers. So these ones will have a high impact on your business eh, and significant uh, strategic relationship. So the, the strategic suppliers are very key. We could have them in one category uh, then we have uh, bottleneck suppliers. Uh, in terms of disruption of these suppliers, could severely impact production. Yeah, so these ones are also very important. Uh, any kind of disruption that might happen for these suppliers is going to impact on how our production and operations are going to take place. And finally, we have uh, the transactional suppliers. And uh, these are low risks, uh, low value suppliers, and they really do not have uh, a very, uh, or they do not have any strategic importance, eh? or the, their strategic importance is is very minimal. Now, uh, strategic suppliers, like we have said, they have high impact on on your business. And a perfect example of this kind of suppliers would be key component suppliers. Uh, maybe we are re re relay, relying on some key components to be supplied. We could have this kind of suppliers. And also, there could be suppliers that we are also partnering in, in innovation. Uh, bottleneck, on the other hand, uh, there are those whose disruption would severely impact uh, production and operations. Eh? So, sole source suppliers, these are suppliers that we could be having in terms of them uh, single handedly uh, delivering the supplies. The word sole means one. Eh? So, we could have one very main person that if they fail to uh, supply, then there is a form of disruption and also uh, we could also have uh, critical service providers also. Uh, coming in handy uh, as bottleneck suppliers. Now, we have to be keen when it comes to uh, supplier evaluation and selection. And uh, we are saying it is simply the process on where we identify, evaluate, and select the best suppliers eh, for the organization. And we are also going ahead to say that uh, this is very critical. Mm -hmm and uh, it will have a significant impact on the organization's uh, bottom line and the overall success. So why do we need to do uh, supplier evaluation and selection? Number one, we want to ensure that the organization is getting the best uh, possible products uh, and services at the best possible price. Uh, that's very, very important and also uh, we want to be able to reduce the risk of supply chain disruptions. 
uh, we could uh, be having a number of disruptions that will uh, prevent the goods from getting to our end. It could be transport issues, uh, it could be um, accidents, and so many other things. So once we do categorization or once we do evaluation, then we know who, which supplier is uh, very, very committed in terms of uh, delivering supplies. And then also uh, to be able to build relationship with, with reliable and trustworthy suppliers. Uh, so through supplier evaluation, we can build a relationship. And uh, the other one is to support the organization's sustainability and uh, ethical sourcing uh, goals. Uh, this is uh, very, very important uh, to be able to also do evaluation. Sustainability is all about uh, the length of the relationship uh, or the re relationship lasting for a long time eh? and also to ensure that we ethically source our goods. By that we mean uh, we use the right uh, channels because we have evaluated our suppliers and we have realized that they are uh, good at what they do. Now, uh, when we are doing uh, supplier evaluation and selection, eh? There are a number of things we look at. Number one is in terms of quality. Yeah, the quality of the supplier products. That's, that's, I think it's a major one that we need to focus on because if it's raw materials and they are not of the right quality, then it means even in terms of production, we might end up uh, producing some standard goods. And therefore, uh, quality is uh, very key in terms of supply evaluation. And also, we also look at the price. Uh, how much are the suppliers selling their products and services? Uh, we also look at reliability and uh, the supplier's ability to deliver on time and in full. Uh, we also look at the financial stability, uh, the supplier's financial uh, stability. Uh, we also look at uh, customer service, the supplier's uh, customer service reputation. Uh, that one is uh, very, very key. Uh, we also look at uh, sustainability and ethical, uh, ethical sourcing practices. Uh, so once we do that, we are able to understand uh, the suppliers and uh, be able to know who are we going to relate with in terms of uh, delivering of goods. And then we will also discuss uh, on how to conduct a supply evaluation. So we'll begin by first identifying who are our potential suppliers. Potential suppliers are simply anyone that we feel or we see uh, could be a good uh, person to rely on in terms of supplies. And uh, where do we get this information for potential suppliers? Uh, we, we can do it uh, through uh, other companies, maybe through benchmarking. Of course, there are those that will be willing uh, to disclose that information. Maybe that could be an avenue. Uh, we could also uh, invite for supplier pre-qualification. We have very many suppliers are going to apply. Then from the, the pool, we can be able to choose the best uh, based on the uh, what we see on their documents in terms of experience. Uh, in terms of uh, the work that they have been able to do. And then uh, the other one is uh, gather information about each supplier. So uh, this can be gathered from a variety of sources, eh? uh, such as uh, supplier websites, uh, industry publications, uh, customer reviews, and so on and so forth. And the other one is uh, we need to evaluate each supplier against the organization criteria. Eh? So uh, this will be done using a variety of methods such as uh, scoring systems. Uh, we could have checklists, uh, pairwise comparisons. And also finally, uh, once we evaluate uh, the many that we have, then we can select the best from uh, that particular list. Now, uh, we have some tips here that are going to guide us in, in terms of effective supplier evaluation eh, and selection. Number one, we need to use a variety of criteria to evaluate suppliers. So we can use a number of methods. Uh, and once we use it, we are able to get a clearer picture of each supplier and make a more informed uh, decision. And also we need to be realistic about uh, our expectations. 
because we need to have in mind that no supplier is, is perfect. Huh? So each one of them is uh, critical in terms of uh, us making a decision about them. But we need to have uh, less expectations on each one of them. Even those maybe that we have heard that they are very good, uh, maybe from other sources. Remember, they have not been able to serve us. So how can we be able to rely on them? Mm. Or how can we have uh, too much expectations on them and they have not been able to serve us? Uh, the other one, we need to build a relationship uh, with these suppliers. And this is going to help us ensure a good communication uh, and cooperation. And also, uh, finally, as another tip, we need to monitor uh, the supplier's performance on a regular basis. Eh? And this is going to help us uh, to identify any, any, any problem eh? uh, early. And also that we are going to take corrective actions. We have uh, something we call uh, supplier onboarding. And uh, we are saying is the process of integrating a new supplier into an organization's supply chain. Eh? And this is, uh, of course, very, very critical. Uh, over and over again, we may need a new supplier, maybe of an item. Maybe we have diversified our production. We have increased our product line. Uh, that means we need to on onboard uh, or it may mean that we need to onboard new suppliers, eh? bring new suppliers into, into your system or into your list of suppliers. So uh, that one is uh, uh, very, very important. And why do we need to do onboarding? Number one, we need to ensure that the suppliers are going to understand the organization's requirements and expectations. Eh? And also uh, through that, we can provide uh, the supplier with information and resources they need to be successful. And we also need to build a strong relationship with these suppliers. And finally, we also need to reduce the risk of uh, supply chain disruptions eh, and problems because we have onboarded as uh, many as we would wish. Now, uh, best practices for supply onboarding, uh, we need to create a formal onboarding plan. So this one is going to outline the steps and processes that will be involved in onboarding uh, the supplier. So we need to have a, a defined way of doing onboarding. We cannot just wake up and pick anyone. Uh, and then also we need to communicate with the suppliers uh, early and often. Uh, this is going to help ensure that the supplier is going to understand the organization requirements. Eh? And also, we need to provide uh, the suppliers with the information and resources they need to be to be successful. This will include things like uh, access to organization systems and processes, training and, and support. And also, as we continue with onboarding, uh, we need to set uh, very clear expectations and goals. Uh, this is going to ensure that the supplier is on the same page as the organization. Uh, and also, we need to monitor uh, supplier performance. And this is going to help identify uh, any critical problems earlier and to be able to take corrective actions. Now, uh, tips for effective supply onboarding. Uh, we need to be very proactive. Uh, do not wait for the supplier to come to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is you that is pushing, of course, to have the best. So proactive means you are actively searching uh, for these suppliers that you may need to onboard. And also be flexible. Uh, things may not always go as, as planned. Uh, so you need to be prepared to adjust uh, your onboarding processes. And also be collabor collaborative. Uh, supplier onboarding is a two-way street. So work with the suppliers to ensure that the process is as smooth and efficient as, as, as possible. And also, uh, we need to ensure aligning supplier capabilities with organizational needs. So uh, what is supplier alignment? Uh, that is something we, we need to ask ourselves. And we are saying it's the process uh, that the capabilities of an organization supplier match its needs. Yeah, so we look at uh, is this supplier capable uh, based on the needs that we have uh, as an organization? So by that, we are looking at uh, the organizational requirements. 
Uh, we are looking at assessing the capabilities of uh, suppliers and also having a collaborative uh, working effort uh, to improve on uh, performance and meet organizational uh, goals. Now, supplier alignment is uh, very, very important also. Uh, because of this, we are able to ensure that the organization is getting the products and services it needs uh, at the best possible price and quality. Uh, because of alignment, we will also reduce risk of supply chain disruptions. Uh, we will also be able to build uh, strong relationships with reliable and trustworthy suppliers. And we will also uh, be able to provide uh, the organization sustainability and uh, ethical sourcing goals. Now, uh, in terms of alignment, now we are going to ask ourselves, how do we go about it? Mm -hmm. Uh, number one, we need to understand uh, the organization's requirements. Uh, this includes understanding the organization's products and services, its customers. Uh, so this alignment cannot be for two groups of people that don't understand each other. That's why we are saying we need to, as a supplier also, there is the element of understanding uh, products and services, uh, its customers, and then also you go ahead and access how capable are these suppliers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we do this through supplier surveys, we do this through audits, we do this through performance reviews. And the other one is identify gaps between supplier capabilities eh, and organizational needs. So once the organization understands its own requirements and capabilities of its suppliers, it can identify uh, various gaps uh, that need to be addressed. And also, we can also uh, work with suppliers to improve their performance. And finally, we could also monitor uh, supplier performance on a regular basis. Remember, when we are monitoring, eh, then it becomes difficult for us to experience any challenge because whatever we see is not uh, happening right we could be able to uh, take corrective action early in advance and that is going to also save us a lot of trouble. Now, uh, for us to effectively uh, align suppliers, we need to be clear and transparent with the suppliers about your requirements and expectations. So they need to know uh, what is likely to happen if you onboard them. Uh, and if you align them to your requirements. And then we provide these suppliers with the resources and support they need to be successful. So the organization also have a role in terms of uh, support. Mm. Uh, so that means if it is payments that you are supposed to make as a supplier, uh, you need to do them and make them appropriately. Mm. And also we need to build a very strong relationship with with suppliers based on trust and collaboration and also regularly review and update your supplier alignment plans. Um, now, once we do supplier evaluation and selection, we are going to benefit as an organization. Number one, we are going to uh, benefit in terms of reduced costs. Uh, that means when you are working with suppliers, it can offer the best value for for money. Uh, the other one is improved quality uh, by working with suppliers that meet the business high quality standards. Businesses can improve the quality of their of their services. And also we have uh, issues to do with reduced, reduced risks. When you work with suppliers, you are able that are reliable and financially stable. Then the challenges that are faced along the supply chain uh, and those risks could be mitigated and avoided. And finally, uh, improved supply chain performance. When you are working with suppliers, uh, we can be able to deliver on time and in full businesses uh, uh, to be able to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of supply chain. And finally, we have uh, tips that are going to assist us to ensure successful supplier onboarding. Number one, very importantly, we need to set very clear expectations as an organization. Let us tell the suppliers uh, the reducible minimums that we expect when we enter into any agreement. 
Then we can also provide training, uh, provide suppliers with the relevant training they need uh, to understand the systems and processes. Uh, we could also establish a very clear communication channels uh, with the suppliers. And these can uh, easily communicate with them and resolve any issues. Eh? And also finally, uh, we need to monitor uh, the supplier performance. Uh, so once we do this, it is easier for us to uh, coordinate these suppliers on board the best that we can, uh, on board the best that we could have a good relationship with them. And therefore, once we do this, it becomes easier for us to be able to, to succeed in doing uh, business. And it is also very important.